The term Galatians is mostly associated with a letter sent by the Apostle Paul to a group of early Christians living in Asia Minor at the turn of the first millennium. While there have been countless books and commentaries written on the topics which Paul discussed in his epistle, there is little discussion about the Galatians themselves. Who were they? What was their origin? In this episode, we will dive into the often neglected history of the people who once lived in ancient Galatia. Galatia was an ancient central Anatolian kingdom which was settled around 280 BC by three Celtic tribes. These tribes had migrated from Western Europe in an area that was heavily steeped in Latin culture, and likely carried many of their associated beliefs and traditions with them as they traveled east. Overpopulation and a thirst for new lands and resources led the Celtic tribes to form a large federation of warrior armies, who marched their families through the Balkans into Thrace, Macedonia, and Pannonia. Many of the tribesmen settled into these areas permanently, while others continued pressing further into Greece. Under the command of Brennus, a large army of Gauls fought the Athenians and Aetolians at the Second Battle of Thermopylae. Following the skirmish, the tribes were able to move further south toward Delphi, but were met with defeat. Brennus committed suicide by drinking great quantities of undiluted wine, and many Celts turned back toward Europe. However, a group of roughly 10,000 warriors and their families continued their migration into Asia Minor. Leonorius and Latarius led their tribesmen into the Bosphorus, where they began to lay siege to Byzantium. By 278, the Celtic warriors had earned great fear and admiration for their strength and military abilities. Nicomedes of Bithynia had been entrenched in war with his brother, who had allied himself with the Seleucid king Antiochus I. Having heard numerous tales of the skilled warriors, he employed the Celts as mercenaries to fight for the Northern League. The Celtic army was soundly defeated by Antiochus's forces in the Elephant Battle of 275 BC, which kept them from moving further into Seleucid lands. In exchange for their efforts, Nicomedes provided them with land in the northeast of Phrygia. They were further rewarded territories in Cappadocia from Mithridates I for their services against the Ptolemaic fleet. Rather than creating a single kingdom under the direction of one ruler, they divided their territories amongst the three tribes and created a governing system much like those of conventional Celtic tribes in Europe. From the larger tribes, smaller subdivisions based on familial descent were established. By the time of Pliny in the first century AD, there was many as 195 clans throughout the region. Strabo described the Anatolian Gauls as they existed at the turn of the first millennium in his geography. To the south of the Paphlagonians are the Galatians, of whom there are three tribes. Two of them, the Trochmi and the Tulistubogi, have their names from their chiefs. The third, the Tectosages, from the tribe of the name in Celtica. There were three nations that spoke the same language and in no respect differed from one another. Each of them was divided into four portions called tetrarchies and had its own tetrarch, its own judge, and one superintendent of the army, all of whom were under the control of the tetrarch and the two subordinate superintendents of the army. The council of the twelve tetrarchs consisted of three hundred persons. The trochmi occupied the parts near Pontus and Cappadocia, which are the best which the Galatians possess. They have three walled fortresses, Tavium, a march for the people in that quarter, where there is a colossal statue of Jupiter in brass and a grove which is used as a place of refuge, Mithridatium, and thirdly, Danala. The Tecto stages occupy the parts towards the greater Phrygia. They have the fortress Ancura, the Tulistobogi border upon the Bithynians. They possess the fortress Bluchium. Pestinus is the largest mart of any in that quarter. It contains a temple of the mother of the gods held in the highest veneration. The priests anciently were sort of sovereigns and derived a large revenue from their office. Near it runs the river Sangarius, and on its banks are the ancient dwellings of the Phrygians, of Midas, and of Gordius before his time. While some regions of Galatia were desolate and arid, there were many areas with thriving agricultural production. The Galatians were also skilled metal workers. They established successful trade with neighboring kingdoms and their society flourished quickly. While a few large cities developed, the majority of Galatia was filled with man-made hill forts, which were used for farms and village settlements. 
As these initial communities expanded, Galatians began to conduct raids against nearby kingdoms. Some local rulers paid the Gauls tribute to avoid conflicts, but Attalus I of Pergamon chose to refuse payment and fought against their forces instead. Attalus gained a decisive victory and commissioned multiple pieces of art and architecture to commemorate their victory. It is from this time period that inspired famous works such as the Dying Gaul. Soon after, the Galatians were pulled into yet another conflict, this time between the Seleucid Empire and the Roman Republic. Antiochus the Great sought a large number of mercenaries for his war against Pergamon, who was allied with Rome. The Seleucid ruler was killed in the Battle of Magnesia, and after his defeat, the Romans held Galatia responsible for their involvement. In 189 BC, Manlius Volso and Attalus I joined forces to wage war against the Gauls. Rome put an end to their raids, but protected them from further aggression by Pergamon. In 25 BC, after the death of Galatia's last tetrarch, Amentus, the kingdom was officially annexed into the Roman Empire under Augustus, and the citizens of the new province proved to be loyal subjects of the Roman Empire in the following centuries. Though they continued speaking a Celtic language until at least the time of St. Jerome in the 5th century AD, they became largely Hellenized, and it is thought that the Galatians eventually became absorbed into the surrounding Greek and Roman populations of Anatolia. What kind of influence do you think these Celtic immigrants had on the history of Asia Minor? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching!